Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and this is the fifth episode of our story about New Raleigh 2.0. Last episode, the colony took a pretty hard hit losing both Tao and Sir, who was only with the colony for a few days before dying to his infected wounds. At the very end, they were able to successfully recruit Stompy into the mix which brought them back up to six colonists total. Are they able to continue their growth and survive this Rimworld? Keep watching to find out. While a visiting colony is checking out their garden, a cougar goes mad and starts attacking whoever it sees. Hoff is right beside the cougar and is all alone. He decides it's smarter to flee from it and get help instead of taking it on alone. He's immediately mauled by it, but he makes a break for it anyways. He gets close to the main entrance, but is hit again. Fortunately, obviously, and Smonk are coming to help. They line up and shoot it down while Hoff takes the cougar head on in melee combat. They finally down it and Hoff finishes it off. It seems fitting since he was the one that was hurt by it. Now that it's dead and everyone's safe, they take the corpse to be butchered for meat. Obviously he's tending to Hoff's wounds. He got pretty banged up from the whole encounter, but it doesn't look like anything too critical. In the last episode, they researched how to brew alcohol, so it's time to create a brewery in the colony. The brewing station and fermentation barrels are laid out so that they can begin their work on that soon. The next day, a group of raiders decide to attack the base. It's a decent sized group of men, so they prepare their defenses. The raiders have longbows, and the range is further than the shotguns. This means that Smonk is the only one that can shoot at them from their defenses. One of the melee fighters closes in and is hit with all three shotgun blasts right away and killed immediately. The bowmen know it's too dangerous to get close, so they keep their distance and fire at the men. Obviously, is hit by an arrow while they fall back. Smonk continues the firefight from the doorway and gets hit too. He decides to fall back and force the men to get closer if they want to continue the fight. They take some time to evaluate the situation and make the mistake of moving forward into the base. As soon as that happens, the men take their positions and open fire immediately. This takes out one of the raiders right away, and the other one decides to flee. Another grave is dug and they decide not to pursue the fleeing raider at this time. On the 11th of September, a refugee is being chased by a large group of raiders and asks for their help. It's decided that it's worth taking him in and fending off his attackers. Looking him over, the refugee has some great stats, especially in his combat and medical. Not long after, the raiders enter New Raleigh 2.0's territory and attack immediately. The men line up and brace themselves for the attack. They decide to hold off while evaluating New Raleigh's defenses. They quickly decide to engage and move forward. They're greeted by multiple shotgun blasts, which kills one of them right away. There are too many of them and they get past the sandbags and begin melee combat. The new colonist is ready with his club and tries to go into the fight. Obviously, he falls back so he can continue to fire from the back line while everyone else is in melee combat. The fighting continues and another raider falls. Obviously, he continues to fire from the back line, trying to kill off as many as he can. Another one falls and they begin to flee. Hoff gets incapacitated, and Stompy goes down with him. The archer from the back left the other raiders while the rest were dealt with. They had to quickly rescue their men and tend to them. It also looked like one of the raiders weren't killed, so they took him into the prison and tried to recruit him. Most of the colonists were pretty banged up from the last raid, and their prisoner was doing especially poor. It wasn't long until they died from their wounds. More graves were dug up. Their cemetery is becoming quite large at this point. The new recruit was tending to everyone's wounds, and upon inspecting each person, nobody was in too much danger right now. To boost morale while everyone was still recovering, Fravitar decided to throw a party. Hot Dog, Smonk, Fravitar, and obviously hung out in the dining hall and socialized for a couple of hours until a conduit had a short circuit and caused a small fire. The party was broken up and they quickly tended the flames as quickly as they could. Fortunately, no major damage was done. It's time to name our new survivor after my good friend Heath, who's been featured in some of my other videos. We'll name him after his nickname, King Size. The beer production was coming along slowly but surely. More fermentation barrels were added so they could build up a stockpile for either consumption or trading. Later that night, another raid came through when they were attacking immediately. Not realizing the raiders were invading, Fravatar was outside of the wall. 
He was attacked before he was able to get to safety, and even though he was injured, he made a break for it. Smonk and obviously began opening cover fire to try and help him out. Realizing that he wasn't going to quite make it across the sandbags, he turned to fight back. He was surrounded by three men, but one was taken out by a shotgun blast. While fighting off two men, Fravatar killed one of them and the other raider died from a shotgun blast. This was enough to make them flee. King Sai showed up to help clean up the remaining men. He and Fravatar chased down the last man and incapacitated him. King Size captured him and decided to tend to his wounds. It's always good to have more men in the colony if possible. More graves were ready to be dug. Many have tried to take down New Raleigh 2.0's defenses and many have failed. Their med bay was almost completely full again and they were trying to heal up as soon as possible. That morning though, a group of man-hunting arctic foxes were passing through the valley and they were targeting the base. Wounded or not, the men had to get into position to defend themselves. They all lined up and the plans for more turrets were built. Right then, the foxes stormed the entrance. They were taking many shots but there were just too many and they broke the line. They began attacking the men. Hoff stayed in the back and picked them off where he could. King Size was overwhelmed and knocked down before the rest of them were killed off. The bodies were taken to the freezer for food and King Size was rescued. Most of them were still hurt from the previous raid and continued to rest up in the med bay. Stompy didn't realize how hurt he was and needed to be rescued inside the base. Hoff went to rescue and tend to him. Not even realizing it, Obvious Lee died from too much blood loss. With the chaos of everyone being hurt, they didn't realize how severe his wounds were. This was a big blow to New Raleigh 2.0. They checked to make sure no one else was critically wounded, and Fravatar was the only one that needed immediate attending. Another sarcophagus was laid out to be built for obviously to join the other fallen colonists. Fravatar was taken care of, but King Size passed out at the front of the base and needed rescued again. It was the 2nd of December and a cold snap came through. Fortunately, they had enough food stored up this winter, so it shouldn't be an issue. Later that day, King Size had a mental break and was going on a sadistic rage on their prisoner. The colonists didn't realize it, but King Size had a strong addiction to Psychite, and the withdrawal from not having any since joining the colony was hitting him hard. He entered the jail cell and injured the prisoner, but he immediately snapped out of it afterwards, so he rescued him right away. There were still issues with the defensive funnel into the base, so they decided to expand the opening to make invaders more vulnerable. On the 3rd of December, something absurd happened. Obviously, his corpse was outside while his resting place was being prepared, and a wild boar ate his corpse. This was completely unexpected, and Hoff was infuriated by this. He waited until that night and went out to kill the boar that ate Obviously's corpse. It was the least they could do for him. It only took a few shots to kill it. Poor Lee just couldn't catch a break and be laid to rest with the others. Looking over King Size's health, he was slowly going through withdrawal of his psychic addiction. It would take some time to kick it, but they were willing to help him along the way. More space was being carved out in the base to continue the expansion of New Raleigh 2.0. That night, another refugee was being chased and seeking safety. They agreed to take him in for refuge. Looking over the newest recruit, he had some great shooting and mining skills. That will come in handy for sure. We'll name our new recruit after someone who commented on the first episode requesting to be a colonist in the series, Joey Tucker. Now let's take care of these raiders. There were a decent amount of men, but two of the turrets were rebuilt and there were more clearings in the wall for cover. Right away, one of the raiders ran in on their own, taking heavy fire. He was killed before his men could catch up to him though. The other melee fighters continued to trickle in and take heavy fire. Another one died. The third one made it to Hoff and got a few hits in before being taken out. Another raider was closing in closely behind him and engaged with Hoff. She was killed soon enough and this caused them to flee. One of the raiders were gunned down while running away. Fravatar quickly took care of the last wounded raider while the others escaped. 
They realized that their prisoner was too stubborn to recruit, so they released him to go back to his base. Joey Tucker escorted him to his freedom. While cleaning up the mess of the raid, Hoff collapsed and needed rescued. Smonk took care of him and brought him to the med bay. It got to the point where they needed a high-tech research bench to look into more advanced technologies for their base. A party was being thrown and King Size had a mental break around the same time. The drug withdrawal was still hitting him hard. He took the opportunity of the party to binge on alcohol to help cope. Everyone else gathered in the dining hall and enjoyed a few beers and had a great party. It was a great way to end the evening and celebrate Joey Tucker joining New Raleigh 2.0. It looked like King Size was only a quarter of the way done with kicking his psychic addiction. He still had a long ways to go. He got so drunk that he passed out on the floor of the storage room and needed rescued. Hot Dog woke up from bed to help him out. He went to him and carried him to the med bay to sleep it off and rest up. Another conduit blew and started a fire in the kitchen and the food storage. This could be really bad if the fire spread to all the food. Everyone woke up and fought the fire until it was completely put out. It took a few men and a lot of effort, but they managed to control the fire and not lose any of their food supplies. The power surge caused their geothermal generator to blow, so Hot Dog worked to repair that immediately since it was the main source of their power. It took a couple of hours, but he had it back up and running in no time. That night, another raid attacked the base. Upon further inspection, Hot Dog and Smonk were out mining right where the raiders showed up. They immediately attacked them. Hot Dog and Smonk tried to escape. While running away, a bullet hit Smonk and wounded him enough that he couldn't run. He got hit again and the men closed in on him. Hot Dog, who's incapable of violence, looked back but realized there was nothing he could do and left him. One of the raiders was ahead of the rest of the group and he didn't see Hot Dog fleeing from behind. When he realized he was there, he opened fire but missed his shots. Poor Smonk was almost completely surrounded until he was incapacitated. The raiders decided to take their prisoner and leave without continuing their attack. They took Smonk and his fate was in their hands. Hot Dog continued making his way back to the base as the rest of the men left. The colonists left their defensive posts as Hot Dog told them what happened. Maybe they'll show mercy on Smonk and we'll find him another time. They can only hope and pray that he lives. And this is where we're going to end it for this episode. Unfortunately, it's on a sad note. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching and until next time, have a good one.